by now you should be familiar with the first and second declensions, uh, and you should have the articles firmly in mind. Uh, we're going to move on to the third declension, which is going to use a whole new set of endings, uh, which are the same for the masculine and feminine, and only slightly changed for the neuter, uh, just as they were for the second declension neuters. Uh, but the thing to keep in mind is that the articles won't change. So you're going to use the same articles that you learned for the first and second declension for the third declension. Now the third declension is oftentimes referred to as the consonant declension uh, because most of the third declension nouns, the stem, ends in consonants. So we want to pay attention to that stem. There are going to be some spelling changes that will occur uh, because of that consonant stem. So how do we find the stem? Well, we find it from the second principal part. And remember, this is the genitive singular. So to find the stem, we're going to knock off the ending, the os. So the os is the genitive singular ending. Uh, and that will give us the stem thorak. So you can't guess, or you might be able to, you might try to guess, uh, the stem from the nominative singular. But the most sure way of getting that stem is to use the genitive thorakos. So thorax, thorakos, notice it's masculine. Uh, means chest plate, breastplate, a uh, piece of armor. So your stem is thorak. Kerux, herald, masculine. Kerux, kerukos. Right, we knock off our os and we get the stem keruk. So it's a messenger, a herald. Fulax, fulakos, a guard, masculine again. Knock off our os and we get our stem fulak. And the same, same is going to follow for the neuters. So onoma, Onomatos, to, it's neuter, we knock off our os, our stem is onomat. So you'll notice the, the stem is actually longer than the nominative singular, onoma, name. And soma, somatos, neuter again, body, somat, is longer than the stem. All right, so once you have that stem, we're going to add endings to it. So we're going to say stem plus, and now the endings for the nominative is either going to be a sigma, and if we go back to our thorax, thoracos, you'll notice, oh, well, kappa plus sigma equals xi, or it'll be nothing at all, so soma, somatos. Uh, here, just as a shorthand, we've got the singulars up above, plurals down below, we've got masculine and feminine which have the same endings, and the neuters. And you'll notice the neuters are uh, actually quite predictable and very closely related to the masculine and feminine. So let's take a look at the masculine and feminine endings first. So sigma or nothing, and you'll know that from the nominative singular. Genitive os, e, accusative a, and vocative s, it's usually the same as the nominative, there are going to be a couple times where it's not. I'll point those out to you, but usually, and certainly you should uh, at least guess that. And in the plural, as, own, seen, the movable new, as, as. So we're going to take these endings and we're going to put them onto our masculine and feminine stems. Uh, one thing to note is that they are all short. All of these vowels are short for accentuation purposes, except for own. Own is long. And so own will shift accents towards the back. Right? And then in the neuters, we've got the same, the nothing, right? the neuter, so soma, onoma, uh, genitive os, it's the same, dative e, it's the same, accusative, well, it's not a, uh, it's going to be the same as the nominative neuter, right? That's number rule number one about neuters. And then the vocative is also the same as the nominative. And in the plural, a, uh, right? and you would have guessed that because that's rule number two, that all nominative plural neuters end in a, or alpha. Own, same as masculine feminine. Seen, same as the dative. A, uh, and you would have guessed that from the, no, uh, from the nominative, right? rule number one of neuters. And the vocative is the same as the nominative, so that's also a. Uh. 
Right. So you've got your endings. Uh, some spelling changes are going to occur, uh, particularly with the dative plural and sometimes the nominative singular. The rest we can take the stem and add it onto the end, but the dative singular will, or dative plural, will give you problems. So always pay attention to the dative plural. And let's take a look. Let's get some examples. So thorax, thoracos, breastplate. We've got our stem, thorac. So genitive thoracos, thoraki, thoraca, thorax. Right, we're just adding the endings that we had in the previous slide to our stem. And then we've got the plural, thoraces, thoracon, thoraxine. Right, and this, we've got our stem, our kappa, plus scene equals scene. Right, so that's why that spelling has shifted. Thoracas, thoracas. Thoracas is the same as the nominative. And so masculine and feminine stems that end in kappa are going to do this. This is what they will look like. And then we'll take a look at neuters, onoma, onomatos. So these are neuters whose stems end in tau. Onomati, onoma, the same as the nominative. Onoma, that should be, a, this should be all news there. Bad typing. Uh, in the plural, onomata, onomaton, onomasin. We'll take a look at that again. Onomata, onomata. All right, so other than my bad spelling, uh, you'll notice the endings are exactly as you'd expect. With the uh, following the rules of neuters. Now, what happened here? This onoma scene. We had our stem. Onomat plus scene. The tau sigma. The sigma has swallowed the tau, giving us onoma scene. So not onomatsin, but onomatsin. So keep in mind these two, those two rules, that kappa and sigma are going to give us xi, and tau plus sigma are going to give us sigma.